Hey there YouTube! Well today I wanted to bring you all this 2012 Volkswagen Beetle with 8,000 miles. Now this is the first year of this new redesign and you can see that the differences are striking. Um, this is the 2.5 liter trim level. It's just a step above the base trim level. And there are a few added features here and there. I'll get to describing that in a moment. You can see just how much longer the nose is and just how much more arched the, the back end is. In my opinion, it just looks somewhat less feminine, a bit more aggressive. Um, it shares the same underpinnings of the Volkswagen Golf, the redesigned Golf. And unfortunately, the base engine is, yeah, the same hand-me-down 2.5 liter, five-cylinder engine, so not much of a difference there. I don't know if I'm a fan of these style wheels, but I guess they look attractive because it brings back the old retro look, you know, from the old VW Bugs from the 60s, 70s, with that huge center cap. So I guess it really does work with the look of this car. Um, these are 17 inch wheels, by the way, 215, 55, 17s, rear disc brakes, rides on these Hankook Optimo tires, H426. The old Beetle was just long on the tooth. I mean, it was rocking on the same body style from 1998, so this is such a welcoming update. The interior was also reworked as well. Again, the 2.5 liter trim level adds leatherette interior. It's just a fancy name for vinyl. It's a very good quality. It feels like leather. And you can see the adjustments to the seat handle right there. Well, this is to adjust for more thigh support and the seat height. Backrest, not a huge fan of these crank style backrest right there to recline. Lumbar support. Again, you can see the rest of the interior. It's a welcoming update. Much more roomy as well. Okay, you can see the key, key fob, lock, just latch the lift gate in back, unlock, panic on the side, push this little button, voila, key flips out. This is the five speed manual, by the way. Same familiar engine. Now this is one of my first encounters of the VW Beetle. I first saw it at the New York Auto Show in 2011. I was quite impressed with the interior, much more roving. It was just such a welcoming update. Now the base Beetle comes with many standard features. Um, you get 17 inch alloy wheels, heated mirrors, cruise, eight speaker sound system, comes with CD and auxiliary, a leather wrapped steering wheel, tilt and telescopes, step up to the 2.5 liter trim level, and you get a few more standard features. Um, you get a Bluetooth interface. Both front seats are heated and height adjustable. Um, floor mats, you get this upper glove box over here that opens up. As you guys saw, leatherette interior as well, as I mentioned earlier. So now, as always, let's get down to comfort. Um, yeah, I, I am 6'1", and I fit comfortably in here. I don't even need to have the seat all the way back. If anything, I have it further back than I would have liked. And you can see legroom is on par. Um, since the seat isn't powered, I have to have the seat uh, adjusted all the way up. And thigh support isn't too bad. It lacks some, what I would have wished for this front section to elevate a little bit more, but it's not bad. Um, the seat is very flat, though, I will admit that. Though it is cushiony, it is comfortable for the most part. Backrest hugs your torso pretty good as well. Um, one thing about having the Golf underpinnings is that it's a wider car inside. I mean, you can just see all this shoulder room. I guess my biggest gripe is just this center stack. It's a bit on the fat side. Um, many occasions I just felt my leg just rub against it. Now, interior quality, I'm not going to say it's great. Don't expect top-notch interior quality. Um, we'll start off on top of the dashboard. It's all plastic. It feels somewhat grainy. Reminds me of the Jetta. All the way around. Um, I'm not a fan of this plastic. Um, it's just so shiny, or more so the paint finish. I mean, it scratches up easily, smudges. I would have wished for more of a brushed metal look, maybe carbon fiber look. You know, something like this color over here. But anyways, let's just open this up. You have a little storage area, dual latches. Moving down to the glove box, opens up, it is damped. See, this is where you can connect your iPod, right there, connectivity. Close this up, has dual latches, has a sharp edge right there as you guys can make out. 
Um, yeah, finish isn't good over here. You can see how it just opens up and then gets quite tight over here. And on the side angle, you can see how it's just not flush against with the rest of the dashboard. And here's the radio. CD does have aux, Bluetooth, 8-speaker sound system. I don't believe it has satellite radio. No, it doesn't have satellite radio. Um, down below, heated seats. Again, the climate control, the simplest thing you could ever ask for. <laughs> Blows hard, too. Hazards. Auxiliary down below, conveniently placed. Power outlet. The five-speed manual. Now, to get this into uh, reverse, um, you cannot just simply move it to the side. Again, press the clutch as always, push it down, and then you could get it into reverse. And then, once you bring it back, it'll automatically pop right up. See, it just moved right up a little bit. I guess it works, you won't ever get into reverse by accident. Um, going back to the materials of this center console, it doesn't feel good at all. It feels very grainy. It reminds me of uh, that of General Motors. I'm sorry if some of you don't like that. Though at least the e-brake, it is leather wrapped and it is quite nice. With dual cup holders. You don't have an armrest over here in the center, right? My guess is that the upgraded trim levels do offer an armrest, but yeah, this one doesn't have one. No storage area, cup holder for the rear passengers, power outlet for the rear passengers. The steering wheel is thick. It's not bulgy. It's actually more wide. So, I mean, it appears skinny from my camera right now. But it feels good. It's leather wrapped again. You can see the exposed stitching. Tilt and telescopes just to slatch it right there. You guys can see. Feels pretty good. I am not a fan of this choice of material here, this finish. It's shiny. It will scratch up. It will wear off over time. Um, turn signal lever cruise is right there. High beams as well. What's going on here? This cover is just loose. Oh, well, that's what the steering column looks like, if any of you are curious. <laughs> uh, I gotta clip that back on. Now you can see over the instrument cluster again the choice of materials. And not really crazy with this finish. Let me just focus so you guys can see. There you go. You can see how these gaps just open and a very rough finish to that plastic. Not very nice. It's, it's obvious. Headlamps right there, panel dim, then you have this little pocket down below. You open the door, glass drops down somewhat as it's pillarless. Top section again, covered with this same shiny gray finish. I really don't like that at all. And all of this is all plasticky. Armrest is nicely padded at least. Both front windows, auto up and down, and then get that back up again. Door locks power mirrors, and again, the mirrors are heated. Not a fan of uh, this door pocket over here, the strap. In my opinion, this will fail over time, or sag, I meant to say. Finish on the A-pillar, very good. No open gaps or anything. Going over to the passenger side and into the back seat, everything follows through, so VW didn't fail in that regard. Headliner, nicely plush, very cushiony. Oh shit handle, damped, feels good in your hand, spring is concealed, sun visor, no vanity light, just your mirror, little strap here to the side to put whatever it is you want to put in there, it comes right out, so you guys saw, um, it's not cushiony by the way, but it is very thick, so you guys can see that, little pocket up above here in the overhead console, hands free controls to activate, your, to use your phone, this is where you launch Bluetooth by the way. Um, interior light on and off switch. You can see the light just pop come on right now. Map light. Rear view mirror. Tilts. Old school style. Very tiny, but it works. Just opens right up. Cargo cover tied to the lift gate right there. Little light to the side. Spare tire. You still get it. Some automakers are beginning to delete that. Jack neatly stored in the center. Seats do fold down, by the way. Um, these headrests, I don't know if they tumble or you have to remove them. There you go. You just push them and they'll just tumble. And you have a flat floor, or almost flat. You'll still have a seat at least two inches off the ground, and then you have this little divider there just messing things up. So I guess that's just one little minor inconvenience. But you can see, um, you still get some decent utility in this car. 
Let's bring back down this door. Let's check out the back seat. And yeah, you can make out how the back seat is. Let me push this back rest back up. There you go. You have your headrest, armrest to the side, and surprisingly the armrest is padded. Um, legroom really isn't that big of a deal, though if you are a slightly shorter driver, well I did have the seat, I will admit I did have the seat further back than I would have wished, you can actually have a useful back seat here. I mean, probably best in class, much better than the Mini, Fiat, all of those cars that are similar. So I guess kudos to VW in this case. Yeah, that's the back seat. Seat easily slides back, no effort involved. Under the hood we have the familiar 2.5 liter dual overhead cam 5 cylinder. Makes 170 horsepower at 5700 RPM and 177 foot pounds of torque at 4250 RPM. So not really that impressive here considering the size of this engine and how many cylinders it has, but it's not that it's a bad engine. It's been very reliable though, but what is it, five, six years that it really hasn't been updated in terms of power delivery. Though it is fuel efficient, I think this car can do um, 31 miles a gallon, which isn't too bad. Five-cylinder engine really sounds like a truck engine, but I love how it's just very throaty, naturally. Four K rev limits. Put the windows up. I guess it's quiet for the most part, though you still get the pleasant engine sounds within the car, so I guess it's not too bad. I mean, owners will find that quite pleasant again. So if you're in the market for a car of this form, I guess it's safe to say that you will appreciate this car, you will enjoy it. Um, my recommendations are upgrade to the 2.0T, which essentially is a turbocharged 2.0-liter engine, I guess it's same from the GTI, or the GLI, Jetta. It's a much more refined engine, more powerful, maybe more fuel efficient, and it comes with a very nice um, DSG automatic, the automated manual essentially, and it's just a fabulous transmission. Hey, but if you're also manual, you won't go wrong with either gearboxes, you'll enjoy both of them. This restyle was just so welcoming, in my opinion the older Beetle was just more feminine looking though. If you're that person with confidence issues, you just won't be comfortable with the old Beetle, but with this new look, it's just for everybody, and it, kudos to VW for finally delivering a much better car. Now, this car starts at, I think, eighteen nine, so that isn't a bad price considering all the standard features that you get in this car. And for a little bit more, I would just opt for the 2.0T engine. I mean, you'll just enjoy that car so much more than this five-cylinder. Um, other cars that can compete in this class, I guess that would have to be the Mini, though it will be a much more cramped car and it won't be as comfortable inside either. Another car that can compare is the, the Hyundai Veloster. It will not handle anywhere near as good as this car. Volkswagen has a known reputation for making a good handling car. The Jetta that I briefly had a long time ago, um, that car was just loaded with gremlins, but one thing I loved about it was just its ride. It was just spectacular. So again, if you're in the market for a car in this class, just give the Beetle a look, and it's possible that it can be your next car.